Hey, Anthony. We are continuing our FATCA series. We're up to episode four, I think. Four? Yep. We've talked about what FATCA is, why it's so annoying, what to do if you get a letter. And today we'll talk about filing deadlines for Form 8938. Start with the basics. Uh, FATCA is the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, which is a federal law that requires all U.S. taxpayers, even those living outside of the U.S., to report their non-U.S. financial accounts yearly. It's also requiring all non-U.S. financial institutions to search their records for suspected U.S. persons and report their identities and assets to the U.S. Treasury. Okay, so per irs.gov, they say, unless an exception applies, you must file Form 8938 if you are a specified individual that has an interest in specified foreign financial assets, and the value of those assets is more than the applicable reporting threshold. If you're required to file Form 8938, you must report the specified foreign financial assets in which you have an interest, even if none of the assets affects your tax liability for the year. Um... Thanks, IRS.gov. There is just so much <laughs> wonderfulness there. Wow, not dense at all. I can't figure out why no one can understand right. this. Right, I mean, it just makes so much sense. So um, so basically your FATCA form mm-hmm. for an individual is your form 8938. That is the form that came out from FATCA. That's it. Okay. Uh, there's not, for individuals, don't look for other FATCA forms. This is the one. Uh, now, a few things here is the IRS says, uh, that, you know, we're going to talk about a special specified individual. Yeah. Okay. What is that? And now one of the things, too, is also if, 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 unless an exception applies. Okay. Now, where you're going to find your ex- exception is if you have other probably more painful forms to file. Okay. If there's other more horrific forms than the 8938, then you don't a- have to file a form 8938. Wow. As when well, did, or include it on there. When did we get a kindler, gentler IRS? <laughs> I don't think that fits my definition of kinder, <laughs> gentler. Well, for the IRS, yes. So what we're looking at for where things fall off in 8938, um, and it actually, there's times it can actually help you when you're doing a disclosure, um, depending on which way you go. And we'll, we're going to be talking about that uh, streamline versus standard uh, for FATCA forms, because uh, there's a bunch of things that can spark up. Um if you have a 5471, mm-hmm. Control 4 Corporation, um, that doesn't go on in 8938, but you do have to reference it. So you don't have to go through the whole thing because your horrible owner is 5471 is taking care of it. Okay. Uh, same thing for foreign trusts. Uh, your 3520, 3520A will remove some of that. Uh, part, foreign partnerships, your 8858. In your uh, PFIX, your 8621. I have a lot of numbers in my head today. I believe I'm right about that. Mm-hmm. Um, then that doesn't have to go on. So that's really where your exceptions apply. Okay. Um, if you are triggered, uh, if you're a special, a specified individual, which I think we'll talk about now. Yeah. So you're a U.S. citizen. Well, I think if you are, oh, okay, then you have what makes you a specified individual. Mm-hmm. It's a U.S. citizen, a resident alien of the U.S. for any part of the year. A non-resident alien who makes an election to be treated as a resident alien for purposes of filing a joint income tax return, which that, that does happen when we have a spouses who are, are married um, and you can elect. Uh, one spouse is not a U.S. person, but they want to file a joint to lower their taxes. That does happen. Okay. A non-resident alien who's a bona fide resident of America, Samoa, or Puerto Rico. Um, so that is what makes you specified. specified. Right. Okay. So you do have to report your worldwide income, no matter how little it is. Yes. The exception is if you don't have to file a tax return. That's right. Right. Which is a which is a pretty odd exception. I thought so. Because it could really lead you down to a wrong result. Uh, so many people just stop filing. Uh, people who are retired, they just say, "Oh, I don't have to file a tax return." Well, if you file a tax return, it, it, you would you would have been alerted to a lot of things, and um, especially for retired people who are living on interest income. Okay, say 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 if you're living on interest income um, that falls well below the threshold for filing. You know, okay. maybe you get like two thousand dollars worth of interest income, and maybe some social security. Um, so you're like, oh, I don't have to file a tax return anymore. So you just stop for years and years and years. You never file a tax return. Well, if you did file that tax return and you did put down your dividends, you would get to Schedule B. And Schedule B would tell you, oh, did you have an interest in a foreign account over $10,000? Oh, yeah, of course I do. Oh, well, you have to do this FBAR thing. You have to do all this, all, the, all this other nonsense. It would alert you that you have an issue. But because there's so many people who don't even think they 
have to file tax. They don't even look at a tax. They're not getting this trigger to say, oh, by the way, your worldwide income is taxable because this is something that every day, and I mean every day, very smart people who feel somewhat embarrassed that they didn't know this um, are learning my worldwide income is taxable, but I'm from in, in they're from a different country, mm-hmm. uh, but no, that's from that country. It's not the U.S. Why would I have to do that? Hmm. Well, you're dealing with the IRS. Yeah. yeah. All right. So some other tips. You do have to check the box in part three of Schedule B if you have a foreign account, regardless of how much money is in the account. Foreign real estate is not a specified foreign financial asset. I don't, that just surprised me. Uh, so you don't have to report that on Form 8938. Personal residence or rental property doesn't have to be reported. Now, I would just say with a lot of foreign uh, real estate is in a corporation and is in a foreign corporation. Um, a, a lot of places, uh, U.S., investors are looked as targets for litigation so they put everything into corporation so you may have while it's not 8938 maybe a 5471 Uh, yay Uh, if you do have unreported income from unreported foreign accounts over ten thousand dollars then you do have to enter into the offshore voluntary disclosure program ovdp if you want to end worries about the irs coming later uh to assess some of those terrible fbar penalties right or in and you don't have to enter into the full OVDP. You could use perhaps Stream. a streamlined, uh, which is a lot better. Uh, OVDP is really for those who have um, a difficult set of circumstances uh, where there's rather overt attempts to defeat uh, the IRS from assessing taxes. Got it. So what are the due dates for Form Well, it's due with your, you know, the FBAR. We talked about the FBAR before. For, FinCEN Form 114 is not an IRS form, really. It's really a treasury form, um, but uh, the IRS administers it. It's due, the, and it, the law has changed. FBAR law has been changed for next year, but, but <laughs> keep that. Your 8930 is due with your tax return. So if you're living in the U.S., it's April 15th, unless you get an extension to October 15th. If you're an expat, June 16th is your due date. You could get an extension to October 15th, and then there's even the permissive one that might be able to get to December 15th. Got it. So whenever you're filing your tax return is when it is due. Okay, an asterisk that this year it's actually April 18th because of the Washington, oh. D.C. holiday on the 15th. So we get an extra wow. couple days. Wow, you're looking ahead there. Yeah, I'm All s- right. That's why you hired me. <laughs> um, if you omitted Form 8938 when you filed your ta- income tax return, then what do you do? Uh, you're going to want to amend your. You're going to want to amend your tax return and include that. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Um, so we've said that there are serious financial penalties for not reporting these financial assets. Um, we're going to get a little more into depth about those penalties, but they're no joke. Right. They are no joke. Uh, so make sure you subscribe to our channel as we continue our FATCA series. We've got a lot more information to go over. We're going to talk about Streamline versus OBDP, these penalties, foreign trust, all sorts of great stuff. Uh, you can like and comment below. We'll get back to you. And thanks for watching. IRS Medic, the law offices of Parent and Parent, LLP. Real tax attorneys for tough tax problems.